Hi everyone, Mike here with another painting video. This time I'm painting an oldie but a goodie, the Flesh Golem from Massive Darkness. I'm starting off by painting the sword and the blade on the chain weapon with an equal mix of dark blue-green, black, and silver. You could use Incubi Darkness and Abaddon Black if you have those, or Dark Sea Blue and some other black or dark gray. I'm using German gray. The goal here is to make a dark metallic color, but I'm adding the blue-green to it because that color is going to contrast well with the rust that I'm going to be adding later. Now unfortunately, my camera ran out of memory while I was filming myself paint the sword and chain blade, so you'll have to trust me when I say that it was extremely satisfying to watch. Anyway, here's how the sword looks so far. These are the colors I'll be using for the rust, though you can get away with fewer colors. You could just mix up a dark brown and an orange brown for this. I'm starting off with the darkest color, Rhinox Hide, which I've thinned with a little bit of water. I'm using this to paint the entire chain. I want the chain to look super rusty, so it's not even getting the first coat of the metallic color. Next I've thinned the Rhinox Hide down even more, so now it's about two parts water, one part paint, and I'm dabbing this all over the back of the sword, and about 50% of the front. I want the edge to remain mostly uncovered. I'm also putting this into all the little pits and scratches. Now I'm switching to Mornfang Brown and I've thinned this down a lot as well. It's okay for it to be streaky and to leave tide marks because rust is going to form in seemingly random patches on neglected steel. There are some places where you'll get a little more rust and that's in places where moisture can pool, like the little pits and around the hilt. One tip for this is to only put Mornfang on top of the Rhinox hide and don't cover all of the Rhinox hide. You want some of that color to show through. Next I'm doing the exact same thing with the chain and the blade attachment. I'm putting random patches of the Mornfang brown on the chain and I'm leaving the edge of the blade mostly unrusted. It's already looking pretty good, but for a more realistic look, I'm now switching to the next lightest color. This one is Orange Rust from Secret Weapon. If you don't have this color, you can make it by adding a bright orange to Mornfang Brown. This is going into all the little pits and in random patches on top of the Mornfang Brown. The last color I'm using is XV88, and I'm using this very sparingly. I'm only putting this in very small patches on top of the Orange Rust. The next color I'm using is Shining Silver from Army Painter, and I'm using this to do a very rough edge highlight all around the sword. I'm just stippling this on because I want it to look like the rust has been chipped away and there's bare metal that's been exposed. So this is how the sword looks in the end, and I'm going to use this exact same process on the blade at the end of the chain. Now flesh golems, much like Frankenstein, have been stitched together from multiple different corpses. So for this reason, I want to mix together three different skin tones. I want them all to be similar though, so I'm using the same base color for all of them, Cardic Flesh from P3. After I've laid down three pools of the cardic flesh, I'm then mixing in a purple, a blue, and a green with each one to create varying skin tones. Next you just need to figure out where you want your different skin tones to go. I'm using a mix of the character art and the location of the stitches on the body to decide where each skin color is going to go. So here's a front and back view of where I've placed each of my skin colors, and now I'm going to use a single wash to try to tie all these skin colors together. I've mixed together equal parts Agrax Earth Shade and Reikland Flesh Shade, and I'm not going to thin this down with any water, I'm just going to put it over all of the skin. Now 
Next, I'm going to do some highlights on the skin. And just to keep this simple, I'm only adding a little bit of white to each of the three original skin tones. The first thing I'm going to do is use the original skin tone for each of these patches of skin. And I'm going to repaint each part, but leave all of the recesses untouched. If any part of the skin is really hard to reach, it's probably also in shadow, so I'm not going to bother highlighting those parts of the skin. Once I'm happy with that first layer using the original skin tone, I'm then switching to the brighter skin tone and I'm just picking out select areas. On the face, I'm picking out the sides of the jaw, the lip, the tip of the chin, and the nose and the brow. On the rest of the skin, I'm just picking out any raised areas and focusing most of it on the top of the miniature. So looking straight down on top of the miniature, any bumps or raised edges I can see, I'm going to paint those with the highlight colors. Next I'm only painting one of the eyes, the right eye with a small amount of off-white. You can use pure white for this and if you're not happy with how bright it is then take a little bit of your wash, thin it down with some water and then put that over the eye to make it look more natural. Next I'm going to be painting all of the cloth and the leather straps and for this I'm going to be using three different shades of grey. The first one is pure black, a bad and black in this case and I'm base coating all of the cloth and leather with this color. I'm also using the black on this mohawk of hair that he's got going on on top of his head. Now, while I still have this black on my palette, I'm going to use it for something else. I'm going to mix in a bit of gunmetal from Army Painter. I'm mixing a dark steel color with this, and I'm using it to paint the remaining parts of the miniature that haven't been painted yet. So this would be all the bits of armor that are hanging off of him, the sword that is stuck into his right shoulder, as well as the stitches that are holding the bits of skin together. One thing I forgot to paint was all the rivets that are sticking out of his right shoulder and his right arm. I do come back and paint that later with the exact same color, but you might as well paint that right now. Next I'm going to paint the grips of the two swords using Gal Vorbach Red. Now I'm going back to my grey colors. This one is Skaven Blight Dinge. I'm using this on all of the upturned surfaces and raised edges of all the areas that I painted black. I'm also trying not to get it into any of the grooves because I want that definition between the folds of the fabric. I'm also using this on the tips of the black hair. Now I'm switching to Storm Vermin Fur and I'm only painting a very thin highlight on all the raised folds. I'm also using this on the very tips of the hair and I'm stippling it onto the fabric to give the fabric a more textured look. Now I'm going to mix up a dark blood color using roughly equal parts Mephiston Red and Rhinox Hide. I'm also going to add quite a bit of water to this to make it into basically a dark red wash. The first place I'm going to use this is on the ends of all the staples to make it look like the skin bled a bit when they were pushed through. I'm also going to add some to the left eye socket and have a bit of blood running down to make it look like this eye was cut out. 
Now here's the part where I realized I missed all these studs that are sticking out of the skin, so I'm painting these with the black and gunmetal mix. Then just like I did with the staples, I'm adding a bit of blood all around the bottoms of these. There's a few fairly prominent holes in the torso, and I'm going to use a bit of this blood wash to make those areas look more raw. The last step before I paint the base is to add a bit of Nuln Oil wash to all the areas that I painted with the dark metal and also the grips of the swords. If you've watched any of my other Massive Darkness videos, then you already know how I paint my bases. I'm going to first map out a little brick pattern using some Abaddon Black, and then I'm going to use several different grey colours just to colour in the bricks. Once that's done, I want to add a bit of grime to these bricks, so I'm using Agrax Earth Shade and also some Athonian Camo Shade, and I'm just putting random splashes of it on the ground. And the last step before I spray this entire thing with a matte varnish is to paint the rim with a dark grey or a black. And there you have it, the Flesh Golem from Massive Darkness, also usable in Dungeons & Dragons. A special thanks to all my patrons, I really appreciate all of your support. And a big thanks to Brian Jones for sponsoring the channel. If you haven't painted this guy already, give him a try, he was a lot of fun. I don't know why, but I love painting rust on things. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them in the comments section below. I hope everyone's staying safe out there, and thanks for watching.